हेलो एवरी वन माई सेल ऋषभ गुप्ता ए स्टूडेंट ऑफ फोर्थ प्रोफेशनल ईयर ऑफ लखीमपुर कॉलेज ऑफ वेटनरी साइंस सेल वी डिस्कसिंग ऑन द टॉपिक एना प्लाजमोसिस नाउ बिफोर वी प्रोसीड फर्दर दिस इज ए डिस्क्लेमर दैट दिस प्रेजेंटेशन हैज बीन प्रिपेयर बेस्ड ऑन द एबिलिटी ऑफ यू जी स्टूडेंट ऑफ लखीमपुर कॉलेज ऑफ वेटनरी साइंस टू प्रोवाइड एज मच एज एकट इन्फॉर्मेशन एज पॉसिबल फर्दर information provided in the presentation should not be used for treatment without consulting a registered practitioner it is strictly for educational purpose and not for commercial purpose with that being said let's move forward with the presentation let's begin with the introduction what is anaplasmosis anaplasmosis is an important rickettsial group of infectious disease characterized by debility anemia and jaundice it is synonymously known as south african gall sickness and aplasmosis may lead to significant economic impacts and can result in increased call rates within a herd as well as 20 to 30% loss in body weight in individuals abortion and acute death is also marked in anaplasmosis now coming to etiology the disease is caused by anaplasma species and they are the intra erythrocytic bodies anaplasmosis in wild animals and cattle is caused by anaplasma marginale while in sheep and goat is caused by anaplasma ovis again anaplasma centrally causes mild anaplasmosis now coming to epidemiology bovine anaplasmosis is worldwide in distribution it is endemic in tropical and subtropical zones where large population of factors are present indigenous cattle are generally not susceptible and disease mainly occurs in exotic and crossbred cattle animals of all age groups are susceptible animals above 3 years are commonly affected while young animals appear less susceptible to the disease and remain as carrier and premium the average age at which calves in endemic areas gets affected is 11 weeks while mortality rate depends upon the susceptibility of the host and virulence of the organism now coming to mode of transmission so what are the various modes of transmission of anaplasmosis the infection spreads mainly through ticks such as exodid the picture in the right shows the transmission through ticks in bovine beside ticks tavernas species stomoxis species and mosquitoes have been found to transmit the infection secondly mechanical transmission may occur through or during dehorning castration vaccination or ear marking or any way where there is transfer of blood or sharing of blood infection may occur through transplacental route also now coming to pathogenesis here is a flow chart so anaplasma organism affect the mature erythrocyte by endocytic process reproduction of organism occurs by binary fission to produce 2 to 8 initial bodies which leave by exocytosis to infect other erythrocytes infection is established after 2 to 6 weeks of infection parasitized erythrocytes are removed by phagocytosis in the reticulo endothelial system with the release of acute phase inflammatory reactants and consequent development of fever continued erythrocyte destruction leads to anemia the appearance of immature erythrocyte leads to any isocytosis and polychromasia again the appearance of anti erythrocyte antibody causes isoimmune anemia in later acute stage and exacerbate the condition the anemia is severe in adults and splenectomized animals and may lead to the development of jaundice which again exacerbate the condition 
Now coming to clinical findings, the infection may appear as per acute, chronic and mild form. It is to be noted that acute form is observed in cattle and buffalo while subacute form is seen in sheep and goat. Acute form of disease is characterized by high rise of temperature, nasal discharge, lacrimation, loss of conditions, pale mucous membrane, jaundice, muscle tremors, coughing, inefficiency, enlarged superficial limb nodes, etc. Again, paracute form is characterized by excessive salivation, rapid respiration, and then it is seen in pure bread as well as crossbred cattle. Again, chronic form is characterized by inefficiency, variable temperature, anemia, and loss of condition. The different lesions of anaplasmosis are located in the organs of reticulo and the serial systems. Again, it can be seen that all mucous membranes turn yellow. Again, spleen and liver and large and gallbladder is distended. There is pericardial and epicardial hemorrhage. The picture above shows the different lesion of anaplasmosis. Now, coming to diagnosis, history taking is most important that is incidence of occurrence of the disease and presence of insect factor. Secondly, through clinical findings. Thirdly, examination of blood films that is Jimsa or Lesman stain are used. Fourth, erythrocytometric values that is severe reduction of total erythrocytic count and pack cell volume and hemoglobin level are observed. Fifth, animal sub inoculation test here, the blood from a suspected carrier is to be injected into healthy susceptible splenectomized animals. 6. Serological test. There are various serological tests such as complement fixation test. It is the most important test for detection of carrier animal. Then capillary tube agglutination test. Then curd agglutination test. Fluorescent antibody technique. Dot ELISA. PCR. Based on the serological test, confirmative diagnosis are made. Now, coming to differential diagnosis, anaplasmosis is often confused with the following diseases such as babesiosis, thalerosis, and leptospirosis. In babesiosis, there is hemoglobinuria and high rise of temperature. Again, thalerosis, there is the causative agent can be differentiated in Blood smear, cytones are seen in lymph node biopsy smear along with the enlargement of superficial lymph nodes. In leptospirosis, the course is short, again abortion is present in pregnant animal and presence of organism in urine. Now moving to the most important part of the discussion that is the treatment. Drugs that are used in the treatment of anaplasmosis are as follows first the tetracycline group of drugs such as oxytetracycline and tetracycline at a rate of 10 to 15 mg per kg body weight intramuscularly to be administered second imidocarb hydrochloride at a dose rate of 5 mg per kg body weight intramuscularly is effective third berenil at the rate of 20 mg per kg body weight, single dose of intramuscular injection produces recovery. Fourth, a combination of berenil and reverin at a ratio of 1 is to 2 have reliable effect. Again, a supported treatment with liver extract, hematinic drugs, mineral mixture to be done to correct anemia. Now coming to prevention and control of the disease. It can be done by isolation of the carrier animals. Second, strict control of the insect population should be made by a caricidal spray or dips. Third, the serological test of the herd should be made and the positive one should be brought under treatment. Fourth, through prophylaxis. Prophylactic 
immunization against anaplasmosis is done by pre-immunization, antenated vaccine of ovine origin and inactivated vaccine of ovine and bovine origin. Then kill vaccine has been used for fair success. Here there are some of the references which I took while preparing the presentation. Thank you for listening. Have a nice day.